All right, well, I'm continuing to have a lot of success with these uh, choke inductors, and uh, Granddad's involved now, too, and he has used it um, using a wireless cell phone charger. I think that it's Qi is the um, technology where you take a coil of wire and feed it to another coil of wire and have a circuitry that talks to one another. It charges up your cell phone. Um, you can see what I've got going on here. I've got a wireless connection being rectified with two LEDs. It comes out AC and I'm rectifying it with uh, two LEDs to get a plus minus going into a pulse motor um, circuit. It's a reed switch with a little capacitor right here that's stored between the pulses, smooth it out. And it's running this pulse motor. Um, this is you know, I spent 20 bucks on this thing, and it was a lot of money, I thought. But, man, this has been real helpful for this uh, project. Uh, this is a real successful one, this big one, this one here. But all of these are really interesting to try in different experiments. And you've got enough there for a lifetime if you want to spend your 20 bucks and get this. Uh, Granddad's actually taking apart CFL lights, and they've got these uh, radio choke inductors in CFL light circuits but you can shop around. They're not very expensive if you buy them by five or half a dozen or whatever, depending on the size. The bigger ones are more expensive, which is what I've got here. And this is the one that lights the neon. And I, I've shown that a bunch of times, but it'll do it on this too. Let's see if I can get it to go here. There it goes. And this is this um, cell phone charger. And the uh, inductor is bouncing the voltage up high enough to light the um, neon, and that's the guts out of a neon light bulb, 110 volt neon light bulb. But this is the thing about this. Uh, Granddad's doing experiments where he's using the blink from the signal that this sends out. Then you have to have the receiver circuit to talk to the transmitter to get it to come out is a solid... Uh, charging waveform, but this is the part here I bought, and you see it's not connected to anything. And it's not connected to the board here. It's just coming right through this. It's enough circuitry in there to tell this to charge all the time, so I didn't need to connect it. So let me take this off. It'll start blinking. And this is how Granddad is doing his. He's just doing it blinking. And he's made some real cute little uh, spiders with blinking eyes. So, um, the pulse motor doesn't work very good on the blink. There's really not enough of a solid charge. But when you put this in here and slide this down here just right, see the green light come on? This will start start doing its thing. And now you've got uh, full-blown uh, power coming out of it. And it, it comes up from around uh, less than 10 milliamps all the way up to 300 milliamps comes out of this on this setup. Now had I have a cell phone in here, a power bank, it pumps out uh, quite a few more watts of energy. Uh, downside is you lose a lot to heat and uh, the efficiency between the two coils, it's a near field resonant coil induction circuitry here is the transmission of energy. Then I'm picking it up with another coil. It's not even close to the same coils here but it works. Same thing here. This isn't even close, and it's not in a tank circuit. It's just the inductor. Um, so anyway, it's a really interesting little series of videos that he is doing and I am doing. I'll give a link to his uh, spider video um, that he's using a 3D printed spider with these LEDs in the spider's head to uh, pick up the energy off of um, a round. He's got a round... Uh, cell phone charger unit and uh, this is the one where you set the phone in there like this but this was what got me was the fact that it'll pick this up and, and light the neon it's still running the pulse motor very very interesting now you see it lost its signal there let me put this back here and I'll see if I can get it to fire up again See, there it goes. You can see the pulse motor speed up again. But 
yeah, this is rather interesting. This is this uh, wireless transmission of energy. It's not connected using uh, induction. It's the induction, the near field induction method of uh, wireless energy transfer. Um, a lot of problems with it, but it's so popular now that people don't have to plug in their phone that it's being used uh, a lot, even though there's a loss of uh, energy and the efficiency is not very good because it's convenient and people can just lay their phone down or their earbuds or their watch on a pad and it charges wirelessly. They don't seem to mind the loss of energy. Um, but anyway, that's something I've been working with is these um, choke inductors and different ways to use these inductors. And they're called radial choke inductors. And you want to get the ones in this range here if you're going to do something like that. You don't want the little ones. You want the bigger ones that have the millihenries for this kind of application. Um, I did quite a bit of work on this uh, years earlier with uh, Dr. Stifler and some of the other people on this wireless uh, transfer of energy. Uh, it really hasn't advanced as far as I thought it would advance. This wytricity um, really isn't uh, where I thought it would be after all these years. But anyway, this was a fun experiment. I, I got a big bang out of it, and uh, I think Granddad is too. Talk to you later. Thanks for watching.